Welcome back to Ember Sparks. Up to now, we've been working solely within the comfortable confines of front end JavaScript. But it's time to communicate with the outside world, to explore the depths of the internet, to expand our world to that of JSON. So you can imagine that we're using whatever you're using, whether that's Ruby, Python, Elixir, Node, Java, PHP, or Visual Basic. Whatever, it doesn't matter because we'll be showing none of those in this screencast series. However, even though we're only stepping slightly outside the bounds of our application, being able to access JSON APIs greatly expands what we're able to do. For the purposes of our podcast today, what we're gaining is the ability to persist data. Right now, when you make an edit and then reload the page, your edit's gone. We want to fix that. Here's an example of the JSON that we'll be using. In this case, it's the post resource accessed via git call. It's the same type of data that we've been using so far, the same format, but now it's coming from the server. In order to get this API working with our application, we'll need to change just a few things. The first is to change the adapter. Most of you will want the rest adapter. But if you happen to be using active model serializers, then you'll use the active model adapter. Now Ember knows how to expect your JSON to be formatted. If your API is not very consistent, go ahead and check out episode one to see how to make a per model adapter. We we'll also need to make sure that Ember data knows the namespace for our API. We we'll use the namespace option and then just give it a string. In this case, our namespace is API version 1. Next, we need to set up a proxy server in order to get around cross-origin resource sharing woes, or cores. Cores is built to protect your website, but it's also annoying when you're working in a dev environment. So the proxy server is a weird workaround, but with Ember AppKit, it's not that hard to pull off. All you have to do to set it up is to put these three lines in your package.json. As you can see, they'll be replacing the stub method that was there before. And we'll have to put quotes around it. And then, of course, we'll have to change it so that it matches our server's configuration. Then you'll have to restart your grunt server so that you have the new proxies. Now our app is loading from the server. But still, if we edit something, like say correcting the spelling error, then if we reload, it still won't save. That's because we never tell it to. Fortunately, Ember Data makes this very easy. All we have to do is call this.git model and then save that model. And that'll happen when we hit the done editing button. Now we can edit it again. We can correct the spelling again, and when we reload, we'll see that it has saved. And that's all there is to it. Of course, once you have relationships between your models, stuff gets a bit more complicated, but that's for another episode. Happy coding!